Hi there, my name is Megan Gajewski and I thought I would film this video so that we can have a discussion about my top three tips to get you prepared for your exam. My first tip, know what you know. This tip is quite important because this tip requires us to be honest with ourselves and this is often the most difficult part of trying to study especially if you're picking yourself up and having to do an exam over again okay when you're preparing for your exam it is easy to tell yourself in your mind i didn't make it because of time pressure or stress on the day or various other factors that could come into play and while all of these factors are indeed very valid okay we have to come to terms with the fact that perhaps part of the reason why we didn't pass our exam was because we just didn't know the answer. And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? I think it's a very difficult thing, but it's also a very mature thing to be able to admit to yourself that there are things that you actually just don't know. And that's fine. It doesn't make you any less of a person if you can admit to yourself that there are things that you don't know. The benefit of doing that is that once you are honest with yourself and you've come to grips with things that you may not have such a good understanding about, you can actually focus your study on those areas and make sure that you're actually being productive at all times. My second tip, learn from your mistakes. Now, what do I mean by this one? Okay. Often when we're preparing for an exam, there are many mistakes that we make. We often end up doing past papers and then we try and mark those past papers ourselves to kind of see where we've gone wrong. Okay. But a lot of us sometimes stop at that point and we, once we've marked and we've seen what we've done wrong, we kind of say, oh, well, I know the answer now. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get it right the next time. Don't make that assumption. Please, I'm begging you. One of the most important things I had to do when I was studying for my exams was getting myself a book. And this book I would call Megan's Book of Mistakes. And essentially what I would do in this book is I would write down every sort of mistake that I was making as I was revising my papers and getting things wrong. And the benefit of having this book was that in this book, I could write down what mistake I made and I could write down the principle that I did not understand that led me to make that mistake. The benefit of having all of this information summarized in one place is that before you go and write your exam, let's say a day or two before the time, okay, you can reflect back on the knowledge that you've written in that book. And you can go and read it and get a sense for the types of things that you were often forgetting or the principles that you just have to remind yourself that you didn't quite grasp. And I think it's quite useful to have that information on hand because it serves as something that's fresh in your brain. And then when you go into the exam, you kind of have a fresh reminder to say, oh, last time, you know, I didn't remember that or I got stuck on that principle but I did revise it and now I do understand it. My third tip, failing to plan is planning to fail. Now we've heard this expression many times before, but what does it mean in the context of studying for an exam? When you study for an exam, okay, it is much like trying to bake a cake, for example. So for those of us that have baked a cake before, you know that if you're going to bake a cake, you're going to look at a recipe, okay? But you, before you even start with anything, you're going to read the recipe through to get an understanding of everything that you will need in order to bake this cake. For example, the ingredients like the flour, the sugar, the eggs, the butter. And you'd also need to know, well, what other things do I need? Like the cake, I need the cake tins. I need something for the topping, etc., etc. Okay, so you you plan everything that you need to do beforehand, so that while you're mixing your ingredients, you don't get stuck running around for this, that, and the other. Now, it is very much the same thing that we experience when we prepare for our exam. Okay. 
before you can get into any sort of preparation you've got to take a step back and say how much time do i have and what amount of work do i have to cover within that time once you have an understanding of what needs to be covered and how much time you have to cover that it is important that you drop a timetable and that timetable serves as a very good tool to keep you accountable for what you need to do as well as helping you to manage your workload going forward it is very important that in prepar in preparing for your exam that you practice good time management techniques and by time management i'm not i'm not referring yet to what happens in the exam but i'm referring to that part of preparing to make sure that we have sufficient time to study all of the work that is required so thank you very much for listening to this video i hope that my top three tips have helped you so far please make sure that you check in next time for the next video where i'll be going through a lot more study tips thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye